Algebra 1, 12.5a, direct variation and constant of variation. We have equations in the form of y equals kx. Those variables are directly proportional. They vary directly to each other. If x is tripled, then y is tripled. And if x is cut in half, y is cut in half. And that k is going to stay the same number. It's going to stay a constant number. So if a car travels at a constant rate of 20 miles per hour, it doesn't change. The distance it travels is going to depend on the amount of time it traveled. We can make a table showing the distance, d, that the car travels for several increments, several different increments of time if it keeps going 20 miles an hour. So after one hour, it would be 20 miles, two hours, it would be 40, and so on. That distance directly varies as the time increases. We could keep going, couldn't we? We could do 5, 6, 7, 8, and because this is constant, we could just multiply these, couldn't we? 20 times 4, 20 times 5, 20 times 6. So the distance is going to equal that constant 20 miles an hour times the amount of hours, the time, see? So our definition here for direct variation and constant of variation is an equation in the form of y equals kx, that's the direct variation, where k is a non-zero constant. So k can't be a zero, all right? But it's a constant number that doesn't change. It shows, it expresses a direct variation. And the k is the constant of variation. It's that constant number that doesn't change. Now, when there's a direct variation, that y equals kx, we can find that pink k, that constant of variation, if we have the values for one pair of x and y values, one ordered pair. And we can use k equals y divided by x. Fractions are little division problems, right? And simplify this if we have to. So if we have an ordered pair of x is negative 2, y is negative 10, we plug it into this direct variation equation as negative 10 equals k times negative 2. And we can take this product and this multiplier and use the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division, and we could do negative 10 divided by negative 2 and get a positive 5, and we know that the constant k is 5. The equation of variation ends up being y equals 5x. And because it's a function, it could be written as the function of x equals 5x as the equation of direct variation. So if your homework says, write this ordered pair as an equation of direct variation, you know to plug in the values to y equals kx and write it like this or write it as a function, okay? So just remember that, and I've said this in several videos, x is the domain input x value x coordinate and y is the same thing as the range output y value function of x or the y coordinate. So when you see function of x, you can think of y, all right? The graph of an equation of direct variation is a line through the origin, right through the origin, right here, with a slope equal to the constant of variation. So here's our origin, 0, 0. If we were to put these values in a table, here's our x, here's our function of x, or our y, our orange y. And we know that we had negative 2 and negative 10, right? We plug in a negative 1, a 0, a 1, a 2, and we could keep going. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Negative 3, 4, 5, negative 6, negative 7, we could keep going each way, right? We can plug in our functions of x that fit those x values, and when we figure them out, we get our plotted coordinates. Here's our x coordinates, here's our y coordinates, here's our pairs. We can take these and draw a line, can't we? Well, once we plot these coordinates and draw the line, we're going to see the, you know, remember, the slope equals the rise over the run. And look at this. It's rising to the right, so we know it's a positive slope, so it's going to be a positive number. But look at this. We, our slope goes from this point to this point. It goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it comes over. Our run is a 1. So our rise is a 5 and our run is a 1, and the slope is equal to the constant of variation, so we know the constant of variation is 5. See how it worked? You can also do it the old way of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 
and do your math, just remember to subtract integers, you add the opposite. So you'd have a negative 5 plus 10 that gives you a positive 5, okay? So it's like there's three variables, okay? We have y, k, and x. So if you had the total calories consumed eating brownies, it would equal the calories per brownie times the number of brownies that you ate. The calories in one brownie is not going to change. What's going to change is the total that you've, of calories you've eaten, and also what's going to change is how many brownies you've eaten. And this total calorie consumed is going to depend on the amount of brownies you ate. But each calorie per brownie is not going to change. That number is going to stay constant, okay? And take a look at this. Sometimes you're going to have an ordered pair where the numbers are really close together. Well, that's okay. Then it's a fraction or a decimal. We plug in our values for x and y into our direct variation equation. We get 7 equals k times 8. That's our equation of variation. That's k equals 7 eighths. We put the y on top of the x. And we can do 7 divided by 8 and get 0.875 as a decimal. So we can write our function our equation of direct variation as the function of x equals 7 eighths x, or you can write it as a decimal as the function of x equals 0.875x, and then solve it from there. See? Here's another one. A cost to fill a gas tank, how much you're going to pay the gas attendant, varies directly from how much the gallon, each gallon of gas costs, the price per gallon, and how many gallons you get. You get one gallon and it's three dollars a gallon, you're gonna pay three dollars. You get two gallons and it's three three dollars a gallon and the price stays at three dollars, it doesn't change. So depending on how many gallons you get is gonna change that total cost. And this total cost, this value right here, depends on this one. But that middle one here would represent K, that wouldn't change, it's constant, okay? Our next video is going to be 12.5b, and we're going to talk about word problems of direct variation. And of course, like always, I'm going to have links in the playlist so that you can click on them and get some extra help. If you're confused and you don't know what's going on, you probably got ahead of yourself. And we're almost finished with chapter 12 here. You might want to click on this description and look through uh, the videos to see if any of them can help you. If not, then go back to 12.1a, all right, and see if that'll help you, all right, because we've been talking about functions for this whole chapter, and we've already made like 15 videos, so I'll see you next video, and let's try some word problems, all right, keep your chin up, we're going to make it, bye.